say that you agree. Okay. All right. You're good to go? I'm good to go. Excellent. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And before we get started today, make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening to or watching from. And today, I have an amazing guest. You all know I always say this. I always have amazing guests. But this one in particular is uh, I find so interesting. And he's actually uh, he's, he's one of uh, is a neighbor. He's from Ottawa as well. He's in Ottawa right now. And uh, I have Douglas Courier with me. And for those who may not know, uh, Douglas has quite uh, a life story. Uh, most most of you may know him from being an Olympian. He used to be on the Canadian bobblet sled team, and he's uh, he's had an amazing life since. So I introduce you now to the wonderful Douglas. Thank you so much, Douglas, for coming on. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll get a drive right in. If you could just before I get into the the, the, the more uh, specific questions, can you tell us a little bit about your story and how do how you got to where you are today? Yeah, well, I grew up in a small town, Prescott, Ontario. It's approximately mm -hmm. an hour from Ottawa. And uh, my father was uh, was always an athlete. Uh, he he uh, played hockey for um, Clarkson University, got a scholarship. He, he grew up in a very, very poor family, and it was his way to be able to get an education. So my father always prized sports. Um, and again, being in a small town, it afforded me a lot of different opportunities. Um, I, you know, I did all the sports, you know, I, I played football, soccer, track and field, you name it. But um, as, as I got older, you know, you, you become, you specify with your, you become more specific with the, uh, the sports that you do. And uh, in high school, I really gravitated towards, I mean, I played football and a variety of other sports, but I really loved track and field. I also was doing a little bit of hockey, but at the time that I was in high school, it was a fascinating time sports-wise because uh, we had this guy, Peter, Peter Hoy, who played AAA baseball. Mm -hmm. We had Barry Beckham, who um, who left her high school at grade 11, but became an Ameri uh, All-American high school basketball player, played for Duke, and played um, pro, uh, pro basketball in Italy for years. There was Todd mm -hmm. Gale, who played for years for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We had the Canadian record holder in uh, race walking. So it was just this really bizarre time where all of these athletes and then myself, um, I was an offset champion in, in shot put in grade 13, but I was also, I had a weird combination of strength and speed. So I also <laughs> ran a hundred meters. So uh, in high school, I was running a hundred and, and less than 11 seconds, but it, it took me a while to sort of find bobsled because as much as I liked track um, and shot put, I wasn't big enough to be a true shot putter. Um, unless I wanted to gain 60 or 70 pounds, which I didn't. Um, and I was and I was just a little too large to be, a, you know, a truly great sprinter. But bobsled, which is what I ended up doing um, after my third year of university, had the, the perfect requisite, um, I had, a, I had the requisite sort of uh, physicality for it because I was fast and I was large. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things they were they were looking for. Because when I, I I did bobsled from eighty nine to uh, ninety two, and at that time everything goes through cycles. Uh, they primarily were looking for track athletes back then. Prior okay. to that, um, the the dominant uh, philosophy was we're going to use very large guys, kind of like linemen, because the sled's heavy to get it off. And then they realize the problem with that is they can only move it so fa so far so fast before they top out their speed. So then they went to track athletes. And now um, most of the current bobsledders are kind of a hybrid. They're all really fast, but they're really strong and large. So they're more like linebackers. Mm -hmm. Everything phases through. So that that's sort of uh, the sporting that I did. And then after I was a, a bobsledder, um, I was kind of looking for a job. Um, jobs weren't easily uh, available. So I had a few jobs that uh, just ended. And then I was volunteering in an old age home. And I had a certain affinity with um, the geriatric set, you know, um, and so I, um, I applied and I went to Algonquin College to become an RPN, uh, which I did. And uh, I've been an RPN uh, ever since. It's now coming into my 28th year. And then uh, throughout um, 
I have uh, I have three amazing daughters and uh, and Angie, uh, uh, my wife and I, what we do now is uh, one of the I, I've got so many different things that I do. Um, we 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 sell and we try to flip uh, basically fine bone china and um, certain pieces of artwork. And so we've been doing that for quite a few years now. We really love it. it it's okay. it's the the hunt. And uh, just recently, I've um, I've entered. Uh, I'm now part of uh, our union. We have a, a local union at my hospital, local uh, 4540, and we have like over 850 members. And I'm currently the vice president of that. Wow. Yeah. So so it's busy, but uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, and I, I, you know, I got a couple little uh, sidelines or hobbies. I, I I I hesitate whenever I get interested in something to mention it to my wife because. You know, Angie just looked at me seriously. You got no time. You know, she's gonna, she's gonna like stuff keep me in my sleep one of these days because I can be a little hyper at times. So, anyway, I'll try to calm it down. So that's uh, that's, that's me in somewhat of a nutshell. I love it, and I love how you said that. As I got to tone it down a little bit because I can keep going, but that's really what it is. You just find something you like and you go with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I I wanted to ask you this question because I've had a, a few athletes on the podcast before, and we always talk about transferable skills. So there's, there's this training, this intense training that comes with uh, any any kind of sport, and um, when you were going through the street, whether it was the track or or the sport or, or bobsledding, uh, there's some sacrifices that need to be made to be able to get to that next level. I mean, you made it to the Olympics, which is amazing. This is something that a lot of athletes don't get a chance to do it. So, well, what would you say would be the hardest things that you would have had to give up or that you had to change some habits you had to change in your life to be able to get there? Yeah, I never, I've never, I mean, this is a question that occasionally gets posed. I never like the term sacrifice. I like the term mm -hmm. choice or decisions. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always tried to instill in my kids. <clears throat> you're not sacrificing one thing for another. You're making, a, you know, a conscious choice. Um, but, you know, for me, I, I was very fortunate because it, as an amateur athlete, not universally across the board, but often we're done doing what we're doing before the family comes along. Mm -hmm. So I was not doing, you know, um, uh, you know, sports, you know, at the level that I was doing when I was on the bobsled team and doing track and field when I had a family. So there was no sacrifices in that nature. I think the biggest sacrifices that people would make, a lot of you pro athletes, you know, they have to move around and their their commitments are huge and, and they're leaving their their wife and their their children at home. And that would be huge. And that would have absolutely killed me. But, you know, decisions, you know, so your friends would go out to a small town to be, you know, bush parties or this and that. And you had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Do you want to train or do you not want to train? I had this amazing track coach, uh, Joe, um, Joe Burke, and he sat me down one day. Well, me and other athletes. He goes, "Here, here's how it, here's how it breaks up. You got three main choices, and if you want to be an athlete, you got to choose two. You know, you can't do three. So you can either, you know, um, do sports. You can go to school. You can have, you know, a girlfriend and a, uh, and you know, well, he was joking, but more like or like a <laughs> social life." He goes, you choose two and you can do well. You choose three and you can't. You, you can't be going mm -hmm. and partying, trying to do sports and, you know, being academically, you know, solid to be able to get uh, possible scholarships or, or, you know, further your education. He goes, choose two. If you choose three, I'll continue to coach, but there'll be a limit. And so I think that's the type of sacrifices athletes make either consciously or unconsciously. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That is the... Uh... No, I, I like what you said there. I, I don't like the word sacrifice as well, because it just boils down to a choice. You really want yeah. it or you don't. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good. And uh, with everything, all, everything that you've got going on and that you, you moved on to afterwards, <laughs> what would you say any skills or anything that you learned while you were training as an athlete that you were able to apply into nursing, into all of, all of that stuff? Uh, yeah. Um, two things. One uh and it goes more not just necessarily nursing but just in, in other things trying to if you if you commit to something trying to get to what i would you know tell people is a point of failure 
meaning that you, you want to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, I've given everything I can. I could do no more. And I got to tell you, from myself and the other athletes that I've talked to, nobody ever feels that way. You always feel like you could have done a little bit more. But we, yeah. you know, if you're fortunate, I feel I was fortunate that I was close to a sort of a point of failure, meaning that I was doing just about as well as I could possibly do. And, and that's my natural limit, right? Um, and, and that goes through for anything like going forward. If you're, if you're going to truly commit to something, you want to commit to it and do it to, you know, to the best of your ability. It's, it's trite, but it's true. The other thing, and I think the most important thing that, you know, a lot of athletes have learned at an early age is, um, how, how do I put this to, to, to grinding, be able to grind it out because especially in nurses, like being a nurse, there are days when it's so hard, but you just do the job that's in front of you because you know you have to do it. Same as being in sports. I mean, especially when I was doing track, um, I was like a shot putter. So when I was like training for the 100 meters, I didn't have very good speed endurance. So some of the speed endurance training was awful. I'd be, you know, throwing up it, you know, in the corner. It's like, okay, I got to get back <laughs> at it. Right. And it's the same thing in life. You know, I've got three kids. I mean, it's hard. And what you do is you just, focus on what's in front of you because if you look too far ahead you're just gonna oh my god I mean I've already suffered from depression I would kill me so I just mm -hmm. try to focus on what's in front of me and yeah. um, realize that there's great moments and there's moments that you get through just by doing what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. oh I love that I really those are two two points that not a lot of people bring up so I'm kind of glad that you did that oh, get that yeah. grind yeah mm -hmm. that grind <laughs> In that reality, you don't yeah. always throw up when you have to, to porch on something, but I like that visual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not, 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 not enjoyable at the time, though. No, sure not. Yeah. <laughs> and then you look back and you're like, those were the best years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you kind of answer that, but I'm, I'm going to, this next question, I'm still going to ask it because uh, I'd like to, I like the way you think. <laughs> I just want to get your perspective on it. But, it, uh, what is the one thing that do you think is important for people to know uh, if, in order for them to get ready for an athletic life or, or you know, starting a new career or anything of that sort? Is there something from your experiences, the one thing that people should know that, you know, we yeah. don't think of? Yet? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I think one of the big things is is commitment and and understanding that the how you're feeling, you know, the, the nervousness. Um, uh, the the lack of um, belief in yourself that we all go through, that's normal. Everybody has it. Um, specifically for sports, I read somewhere and I, I can't, I wish I knew who said this, but what they were saying is that you don't rise to the occasion. Like when we look at great athletes like track and field, like Donovan Bailey, how he rid, you know, rose to the occasion or, or Usain yeah. Bolt, you don't rise to the occasion so much as you default to your last level of solid, consistent training. So mm. you can take that attitude going forward, this, you know, train regularly, train consistently, and, you know, with the realization that you're going to have your, your bad days, and that's the way it is. As long as you're trending forward, and, you, you know, you're still enjoying it generally, because there's always times we don't enjoy even the stuff we love. Um, yeah. I think that's something that works well. Because, you know, sometimes people with, with careers or with sports just get in this, this mindset that okay you know i'm naturally gifted um it's going it's going to come together when it needs to and that doesn't happen it comes together because you've put it together for years and decades at the moment then you need it so oh i love that yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a good really yeah that's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm getting i'm taking notes right now okay. <laughs> Now, uh, what was the, I'm going to get a little bit more personal here. What was okay. the transition for you? Uh, and you go as comfortable as you are. Yeah. Uh, what was the transition for you from going from the athlete life to getting into the healthcare system? Yeah, um, like in any transition, it's never easy. One of the cool things about being a, a bobsledder is nobody knows who you are. But if you mention it, then you suddenly can, you know, it can be kind of a cool opening or whatever. So you can completely fly under the radar. It's not like, you know, even when I, I was competing that I'd, I'd be walking around and go, oh my God, there's the crazy bobsledder. You know, not, <laughs> nobody knew who I was, right? So I could do whatever I wanted. So the transition 
um, in that respect. Like, I can't imagine what it'd be like to be like a professional athlete, especially like an A-lister where everybody knows you. So any any transition that you want to do is under, you know, public eye and public scrutiny. I mean, for me, it was just, yeah. I did this. And now um, that part of my life is over. Now I'm going into to nursing, you know. But I mean, so my transition or, or my ent entering into nursing is like anybody else entering into nursing. It, it's hard. I mean, a learning curve like the Matterhorn and, you know, you're you're not dealing with widgets. You're dealing with people. And so there's a, and families and patients. And, I mean, and so there's a there's a lot of responsibility because of what you're doing. So in that aspect, the transition was was hard as it would be for anyone but I, I was somewhat fortunate like my sports was my sports and when I was done I, I left it I mean I still try to work out and in, in my um, mid-40s I came back and I did a little bit of master's track and field which which was fun um, but you just realize how old and brittle you are and how you know <laughs> like that guy that used to be yeah, yeah. He, he's never coming back <laughs> but, yeah. but it, it was a blast <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple yeah I've had a conversation with somebody recently about that where it's just like uh you know boxing type of thing and it's yeah. like you, you know you always think you can beat everybody yeah, <laughs> until yeah. somebody beats you and then you're like oh, oh okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and everything like, hurts more as you get older <laughs> my my one of my very first times I hadn't put on a pair of spikes in close to like 10 years or over and mm. I thought, I'm going to be smart. I'm older, I'm wiser. I'm just going to go really slow and gentle, you know, a couple strides. Then I was feeling good, right? So I decided yeah. to go a little faster. <laughs> Very first time, pulled my hamstring. And I'm like, I'm going to make the pain stop. And I didn't want to seem like that, that old loser guy, which I absolutely was. So I'm trying to walk off like I haven't just pulled something because I was going not very fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But the, yeah. It's <laughs> funny. Yeah, that's good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 for anybody who's, who's listening, I know the, they'll relate to that somehow, that that moment where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not 19 anymore. I'm not no, 18. No. The yeah. body just, the, your mind is still thinking oh, you are. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm wicked. I'm just awesome in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. we're unstoppable and we can we recover are. just like that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that transition to the body that's oh, that's hard yeah the body yeah. brings us back to reality oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it um you mentioned in the beginning that uh you know you kind of have to uh tread lightly when it comes to new things that you're interested in <laughs> before yeah. you tell your wife uh how did you know is it something that you uh, okay okay i gotta find my words um is this something that was that came naturally to so you knew you, you weren't going to be just sticking to one thing in your life you're going to be doing different things is that something you already knew or is that something you kind of discovered it, along yeah the it's kind of it's sorry it's kind of the way I've always been I'm, I'm very gregarious when I'm in a public setting but I, I'm naturally quite introverted and mm -hmm. so um, I've also been fortunate I've surrounded myself with extremely smart very curious friends and so myself and and my friend group it, it's just very very common I've always been if I ever had to describe myself uh, I think one of the the main terms I would use would be curious like I, I could yeah. go and I'll look at like an, an elevator and, and just I'm thinking how does that work with like the counterweights and the balance and, and so I don't just look I'll just try to do a little research and figure out how elevators work just because <laughs> at my work when you walk in they have an exposed elevator and just the, with the, the pulleys and the counterbalance, I just thought it looked fascinating. And so that's so, sort of the way I am. But the problem mm -hmm. is my friends feed into me. I have this great friend in, in Calgary, Jeff, and he's a bit of a polymath. And so he'll go, well, how about this? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah. And I get excited like I got into uh, Ethereum mining. So I bought the hardware and had to do the research and all of this kind of stuff. But the problem with Jeff, um, my buddy, is he'll talk about this stuff. He won't do so much. He'll mention it to me and I'll actually go and I'll try to do it. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he's the instigator stop yeah. texting him, you know, cause I don't know what his <laughs> next thing is, but it, it'll get me excited and I'll do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The instinct. We all have one, that one friend that just, gets oh, yeah, us yeah. Going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's good. 
at least you notice it you recognize oh, yeah, yeah. it so yeah. you can face yourself uh, what is um what kind of advice do you wish you would have had earlier uh or you know wisdom of, of that uh, would have made your life easier can you share anything like that yeah yeah because I, I was when i was reading the the questions um probably how do i put this i i, I wish um I would have been more selective in what I was doing because as I mm. mentioned earlier in you know my in my introduction you know as a as an athlete in a in a small town um it, it's somewhat expected that you will do everything because you're you're kind of able to do everything at a at a level that you can make any I mean and not to you know sound braggy but I was fortunate in my athletic gifts and so I could do most sports if, if I wanted to and so the, the football coaches wanted me and so I did a bit of football and soccer I mean right. if I had to go back let's say if I could just time travel back to grade 11 enjoy my hair for a little bit um, what I would want to do <laughs> um, I, I would probably get rid of almost everything I was doing and I would have just focused on track and field I would have just let mm. hockey go but it's easy to say, but my dad was my coach. And so I had so many great years and extra time with my father that a lot of kids don't get. So that was, you know, that was awesome. But as far as a, an athletic point of view, I would have wanted to just be a little more specific. Uh, mm -hmm. in what you're doing because it's very easy for a lot of people, you know, that in like, I didn't have this worry, but being open to maybe the sport that you love isn't the sport that you're best at i mean i think one of the problems in canada is hockey has such a large gravitational pull and certain mm -hmm. other sports now basketball that people who might be very good at other sports um just they're not being they they, they go to those sports as opposed to what they may be better at and i mean honestly in canada we, we have a situation where an awful lot of you know what we do very few people can make it let's say at, at a world stage but an awful lot of people could get a solid american scholarship if they pick the right avenue of sports you know yeah so yeah you're and, right about that yeah yeah and it, it it's different depending on the countries because like in certain eastern bloc countries what they would do is they would analyze um at like the the children you, you don't want to get into this but to see you know what their natural aptitude is and i'll just give you a, a quick story so my coach, my, my shot put coach when I was in high school and a bit of university, um, he knew I had terrible balance, but he, he coached for lots of years. And so I'm at the track. Uh, one of my daughters is 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 running, is uh, on one of the sprint teams. And my, my middle daughter, daughter and that's Sydney, uh, and Mackenzie, my youngest, also did some track. But but uh, Taylor was there and I met Joe and I go, Joe, how are you doing? And, um, and Taylor was looking around and um, he was testing people, I'll be very quick, so he was testing people to see if they could be hammer throwers, and what you do is you close your eyes, the, the, the coach spins you around 10 times, stops you, you open your eyes, and you have to go for a straight walk, and so oh, Joe's wow. telling this story to Taylor, and he said, I did this to your dad, <clears throat> and, he, and instead of going straight, he went that way, I just a bit fell over, I have nothing, so Taylor goes, well, can you try that with me, and so he's expecting the same result, so he spins Taylor around, Taylor walks straight as an it like 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 an arrow his eyes pop open he goes i want you to start training and she ended up uh, becoming set like uh second in the uh, canadian youth i mean wow it, yeah so it's one of those things she was just thinking of maybe doing some running but this happenstance uh you know encounter with an old coach of mine allowed her to be um uh, a hammer thrower so that is awesome yeah, I yeah, about, you know, i've gotten off topic no but, no, but it's you're right that you know we're so focused on on one thing, or we start noticing that we like other things, and and then we kind of get lost. So it's nice to run into people that can kind of give you that 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 confidence to say, yeah, I actually like this, and I don't know why, but I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I like that you said that because even as adults, we still kind of get that shiny object syndrome where it's just oh, like, yeah. oh, I. I I like this I kind of listen you spread yourself so thin that you can't actually get yeah, ahead yeah, into yeah, one idea. thing yeah no that is definitely good advice to try to to weed out the the uh, the extra stuff and focus on where you really want to be yeah that's good that's good advice uh how do you find balance because you're 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 very busy you, you're doing all sorts of this how do you find balance between work uh your interests family you're taking care of yourself all of that 
Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm 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 organized, um, but I'm also a, a slob. So you know, I mean, some organized people you think of this sort of type A kind of minimalist, you know. Yeah. And that's in my mind what I would like to to reach and achieve someday. Never going to happen. Um, what I try to do is um, just sort of focus on what I'm doing at the at the time. So you know, work is work, and when I I leave work. Um, the way my wife and I run our little sideline business is, you know, we, we love to hunt and to find. So we'll, we'll go to value villages, content sales, garage sales, you know, auctions. Mm -hmm. you know, I've got a, a few items I'm looking at an auction this evening that I'm hoping that I can win. And then I take all the yeah. I take the photos and I crop them. And then as she does all the listings and the posting. So we'll just sit down and it, it's great because so just as a time management thing, we'll be, you know, watching something you know, a little bit of something on TV and I can do what I'm doing and she can do what she's doing at the same time. And then like with the, the union stuff, I mean, I get like 45 minutes for lunch. So sometimes I'll be, you know, reading and trying to, to learn a little bit more about that. And, you know, um, I, I like following, I have a degree in political science and history. So, you know, I naturally gravitate uh, to, you know, watching the news. So I try to check certain news feeds a couple of times a day, just to, to kind of know what's going on in the world. And then if there's something I like that's a little bit more specific, I, I you know, I do that. And mm -hmm. um, so, and and then, you know, I usually can have a little block of time somewhere else. Um, one of the things that's nice about nursing that other professions don't get is because I do shift work, I'll work days and evenings. So when I'm working in the evening, I work from 3.30 to 11.30, but I have a block of time during the day. So, you know, I'll do the usual, you know, uh, chores around the house and then that usually gives me a block of time and so i'll either yeah. you know work on the business or or, or I'll, I'll spend a bit of time doing some new you know hobby or whatever i'm also a napper so i have to get a nap in there so uh, <laughs> otherwise i'm done and so i love yeah. i'm a napper too i love yeah. it yeah i love my nap <laughs> oh yes <laughs> and if you skip a day and you just feel off afterwards yeah, just... yeah it doesn't need to be long just that half hour 45 minutes and then i'm good to go yeah yeah. Just to recharge the battery and off yes. you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything new or anything, uh, anything that you're working on right now that you'd like to share with us? Well, um, uh, again, like uh, one of the things that I really like doing is the, the collecting and finding of, uh, you know, sort of found mm -hmm. objects that we can do. Um, and we, we've found some really cool stuff. Uh, my wife went in the value village. She found these little Satsuma vases. Um, they were about from the 1890s. They're from wow. Japan, but they were from a, a, a really good um, factory. And so we managed to put those in, a, in an auction, uh, like one of the bigger auction houses in Toronto, and they did quite well for us. Um, this one auction, I managed to find this um, a Chinese scroll by this uh, artist, uh, Tang Ying. And it, uh, I actually managed to get that into Christie's auction house in New York. And it's sort of, wow. yeah, for uh, like, not, I couldn't retire, my, but for thousands of dollars, which considering I bought it for 60, I was very, very excited. And yeah. Yeah, the other thing now is I'm relatively new to being in the union, but it's a very interesting time to be part of the union executive because with Bill 124 that had come through and then had been struck down, but now they're, you know, they're, they're appealing it. Um, wages have been locked there's a massive dissatisfaction in in health care and so that's one of the things that i've been really trying to work on and to to focus on is you know what can we do like specifically uh, as let's say a union to help our members and not just our members but you know anyone in in the healthcare system when you have i mean i don't mean to be political but when you 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 have you know certain governments that are somewhat hostile or, or their agenda doesn't coincide with funding uh you know uh, public sector health care at, at its fullest so that's something else that you know I, i've been trying to focus on and to, to learn more of you know yeah yeah that's and interesting is this something you oh, sorry, sorry you... what were you gonna say no sorry to cut you off no i was gonna say it's something new so it kind of gets you uh motivated to learn more so it's good yes yeah, so absolutely yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, there. no, no, that's, that's okay. I'm not sure what I was going to say. I'm sure it wasn't very interesting. <laughs> Everything you say is interesting. What are you talking ah, about? Oh, there you go. Yeah, you're the perfect host. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> now, um, oh, there's this question that I ask, and I didn't actually explain it to you when I, I sent you the question, so I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, a few years back, before the pandemic, is this little girl that int was interviewing adults on their profession. And she was about uh, nine or ten years old, and she, at the end of her interview, she, this was for her school project, she would ask this question that all adults ask children. So she figured she would ask adults uh, the same question and nobody would answer her. She would get really frustrated. So her mom had told her, you maybe you should stop asking that question. And she was just so adamant. It's like, no, somebody's going to get it. I'm going <laughs> to keep asking. So when she asked me, I answered. I didn't even think twice. I told her everything. And she turned around and so told her, I said, see, mom, I told you somebody to get it. So I told her that I would ask everybody I interview uh, th that same question. So I'm going to ask you now, what would you like to be when you grow up? What would I like to be? Well, I'd like to continue to be curious because that, you know, leads to a, to a lot of things. And yes. um, I've never been rich. I wouldn't mind trying that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't know what it's like over on that other side of the, uh, the fence, but uh, yeah. You know, I'm pretty much uh, enmeshed in this fence. I want to try there over <laughs> for a minute. That's right. I love it. Yeah, I've done it. I've done enough on this side. Let's let's yeah, try, let's, on let's the try other there. Side. You know. <laughs> I love it. I love how you said that. <laughs> this is why I love asking this question because yeah. you don't. You never know what answer you're gonna get. Yeah. Oh. No, thank you so much. Now I could talk to you all day, uh, but uh, I'm going to wrap things up a little bit. But before I do, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot like this, uh, if anybody would like to see the work that you do with the, the kind of the antiques of the, 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 the hunt that you do yeah. or anything that you were, is there a, a way that people can reach you or follow you? Or Yeah, yeah. We have a few uh, different uh, sites. Uh, we sell through Etsy. And so it would okay. be Apollo Vintage Design, all one word. So you would have to go to the Etsy app. And then you would okay. just want to look into Apollo Vintage Design, like just sort of type it out and it'll say, are you looking for the shop? And you click yes. And that's that's our our, our main um, our main site with what of our, our finds. So, oh, that's amazing. And yeah. I'll add that to the description and the comments when I uh, when I post or when I upload the episode so people can uh, can follow you guys. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I could talk to you all day, but I, I really enjoyed our chat okay. and uh, keep keep doing the amazing work. I can't wait to see you on the other side there, enjoying the... Uh, well, I won't to, talk you know. to you if I'm on the other side, though. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see how that goes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay I'm, I'll join you. <laughs> okay. ah, there we are. And that's going to be my first, my new thing. I want uh, That's what I want to be when I grow up, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Well, thank you again. And for everybody watching, again, don't forget to uh, like, follow, or subscribe to whichever channel you're watching or listening in from. And uh, don't forget to have a look at, uh, at Douglas's uh, shop on Etsy. I'm going to put those in the comments and the description. So until then, stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll talk soon.